Hi there, this is Neka and you are on Malcolm Music. Stay tuned. You have to know how to tackle it. If you can speak your language, if you can, you know, um, that's why it's important to preserve the Africa. Anyway, the, well, I think we can go yeah. into depth now. Well, I think it's the same thing here. If somebody speaks the German language, then they also have less difficulties being accepted here because they first they are hesitant and then they talk to the person and, oh, you, you speak my language just the way that I do. So there are some similarities maybe also. Um, do you think maybe that's a predominantly German thing? Because in France or in Netherlands or in England, uh, people of, of African heritage, it always seems that they're a little further. There's, there, it's, it seems to be that there's more normal or more regular, and it's not really a strange thing to see a French African person. Um, at least that's what I've heard from a lot of African people. But they feel as though in Germany that's a little slower the progress. Do you agree? In what, How? You, I, don't, I don't get you. Well, um, in England or in France or Netherlands, they feel as though it's easier for a person of color to be a doctor, be a lawyer, be, be a teacher, be integrated oh, into society. And in Germany, it, it takes more time or it's more difficult to get accepted or to, get, to be part of the, the, think the thing. Germany does not really have that feeling of guilt towards Africa because they flew out of, wasn't it the Second World War? They, they had to give up all their colonies. Yeah, yeah? but they had colonies They had, they well. had no, they, did, they, they basically didn't have any colonies anymore. Okay. I think, I mean, they, they did, but yeah. they had to give them up. Okay. So, maybe they, it's, yeah. you know what I mean? So probably they don't have that feeling of guilt. Like, yeah. France has that feeling of guilt. Okay. England has the feeling of guilt. So it's, that's... I think one of the reasons why... And maybe why also they speak the language too in Africa. They speak French, they speak English. Yeah, so maybe that's because it's easier. they had colonies. Yeah, maybe it's easier also for them and to... And they get, still have. Yeah, yeah, I, I, to yeah, a certain extent. It is. It's, these these uh, connections are still there. It's just not official. It's below, between between the lines. Yeah. Um, we've talked so much about so, so much serious stuff. Um, me as a person... Um, Again, I've already said it. Uh, I've, um, I've seen a lot of people, um, of African um, heritage people, uh, German people, that uh, come to my father's shop because of hair. And it's, I think it's, a, no, I think it's a very interesting issue because a lot of um, people wear straight hair, and as it, and not just, just, um, not just sometimes, but they wear it as if it is part of who they, who they are, like every day, all day, and not just, you know, I'm gonna dress up. Um, do you have a stance on it? There was a um, documentary also about it, um, how important the issue actually is of, of, of um, black people and how they wear their hair. Um, okay, how do you, feel you mean about good it? hair? Well, I, the well, one with. Um, well, I'm talking about why is it so important for by, some. Yeah, yeah, by Chris. Um, Chris yeah, um, Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Yes, I thought it was an interesting documentary. And we always see you really representing natural hair. And is that a conscious decision or do you just prefer it? Me, I just, I just think the wig one doesn't fit me. Okay, but you would wear it if it did fit you. Mm, it's just it, it itches me. It's like having somebody else's scalp on my scalp. Mm -hmm. That's kind of irritating. Mm -hmm. So I, I would rather not have somebody else's skin on top of my skin, <laughs> or somebody else's dandruff hanging on mine. I don't know, or some Indian hair. I don't yeah, know. so you found no, that ludicrous. But my sister uses Indian hair, and <laughs> she even tells me to buy buy some when I go to Brazil to buy Brazilian <laughs> hair for her. <laughs> so it's it's well, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, I think it's a little there's deeper. There's some what I think is still what I you know I can condemn and say we're not proud enough of our hair and our skin, and obviously yes, there's some people that bleach. There's an issue of bleaching. Exactly, yes. Black people so bleaching, many products, yeah. And then they get all, you know, they get all these bumps and, you know, you can't bleach a pimple, so yeah. your pimple stays red. Yeah, yeah. And it, it just, you know, you look and awful at the end of the day. It hardly works, yeah. Then, of course, the stretch, stretch hair thing, is, it's, it's almost like it has become part of our culture to stretch your hair. Yeah, you go to yeah. a barber shop and, and have uh, your hair conditioned. As if it's normal that these people... Permed. Yeah. Well, it is... I don't think it's right. But we found an alternative where you leave your natural hair mm -hmm. to grow, you weave it, mm -hmm. and you now put the... Brazilian hair on top. 
on the Indian hair okay. top. So the compliments so at the hair least you, already have, yeah. you still have your natural hair underneath. Okay. So that's that's at least we're getting we you know we're compromising step by step. Step by step. Yeah. One day you would see everybody. I hope so because I've heard it's sad. Especially a lot of people think that's how the hair is actually, and then. There's, you know, uh, there's so much beauty and, and uniqueness in having that type of hair. And, and, and well, we can talk about hair. Yeah. You know, African hair is also not, as in many women whose hair doesn't look very healthy. That's another thing. Okay. Because but because of the, those treatments, mm, or do you think it's, they I, naturally I, I grow unhealthy? I don't know. I was having this discussion with somebody that okay. and the person said, uh, the person had the, was the, of the opinion that African hair in general is not very, uh, I don't know. You can do so many That's things with effort. You, you can do so many things that you can't do with European or Asian hair. Like you could do dreadlocks. Well, you can't sell the African braided. hair. That's definite. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to buy African hair? Like, who wants to buy the African hair? Who wants to buy African hair? <laughs> Chris Rock said, <laughs> Yeah. Who wants to down they wanted to sell it and they didn't want to have it. <laughs> yes. That was funny. I loved it. Um, for a German local artist, um, you you um, had a U.S. record. And, uh, you did amazingly well on Letterman. I loved the performance, and a lot of people were um, very interested. And you worked with Nas. I mean, the people that matter, the the industry or the, the musicians, they are really impressed. I, I think because we had Nas, we had um, Damian Marley, and Black Thought working with you, and that comes to one of my favorite songs, God Knows Why. I love that song. Um, how did that come about? And I also wanted to ask, it's two questions I also wanted to ask about online. You said, um, I've made love, I'm no longer sacred. Um, that's one of the lines you say, I think, on, mm -hmm. on the song. Mm -hmm. Do you, is that, was that just like a punchline as a rapper? Or do you feel as though there's some, something behind it? Is that, okay, which that, question that you're no I longer, answer? well, that, how, a, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, well, the, how the song came about and then the line, um, what, okay. what it means. Uh, well, the song, God knows why, well, actually I had already finished writing it. I had a first, second, I had three verses on it. Mm -hmm. I went over it over and over and again. Uh, over and over again. I, I had depression. It just wasn't what it should be, you know. And I just had too much of myself on mm -hmm. the record. I just heard myself too much. I overheard myself. I was like, no, I'm, I can't keep hearing myself. It's just too much of me. But I'm sorry. Exactly. So um, I decided to to go out and look for somebody who would complement the the message, obviously, that I'm trying to uh, transfer in, within that song, and somebody who would also match to the rhythm of the song and the, the sound of it. Um, I, I, I thought about Nas, I thought about a uh, couple of other people, but then I didn't think, I didn't feel their energy on that track. I thought that that track would be too dark for somebody like Nas, you know, I don't know. I, I, I hear Nas on beats that are a bit more light, mm -hmm. you know, light to take in. Black Todd, <laughs> Black Todd is a cynical guy, and he, when I met him, he's just so, he's just there. He's just like, he's just there. And that's exactly the vibe I needed for that track. Somebody who is fed up and actually tired, but at the same time, still powerful. You know, and fed up and tired. Why fed is up that? Fed up and tired with certain things in life. Okay. Which, is, which many artists are. We are okay. all. We all probably. If we didn't, if we were not kind of fed up or tired within ourselves, or have some sort of melancholy or misery within us, we wouldn't be inspired to sing the songs we sing. Yeah, there'll Makes be nothing sense. to talk about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Black Todd was the guy for that track, and he, 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 I didn't even have to explain, he just hit the nail on the head. And